Bringing all of this to a satisfying conclusion has been one of the most difficult things I think we've ever done. Yes. And JJ would agree. And, you know, it is, it's true. How do you do it? Um, it's a lot of conversation, a lot of debate, and I think um, we feel pretty good about where we ended up. Things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the only one platform to build your online presence. A nuclear bomb has just been dropped on all the man baby calling Disney Star Wars defending Raylo weirdos. And then all you Raylo shippers, the moment we've all been waiting for, uh, Ben and, and Ray kiss. And you're like, oh my God, look at that. But that's not even the good part. The bomb was aimed squarely at Kathleen Kennedy and JJ Abrams. Mic drop. <laughs> and sadly, the person aiming this bomb didn't even know Ryan Johnson existed. Remember, we started shooting this movie before Seven came out. That's, that was weird. That's actually true. Yes, the magnificent Marsha Lucas has come out and just destroyed the sequel trilogy in one interview, saying what a lot of us have felt all along, that no, we don't hate these films because we're misogynistic, racist assholes. We hate these films because they are terribly made movies with terrible stories by people who have no idea what Star Wars is about or what the fuck a Jedi is. And it's <laughs> glorious. And it only took minutes for the weirdos to start losing their fucking minds over this. And boy, have I been happy ever since. So for just a bit of backstory, Marsha Lucas is George Lucas's ex-wife, who was already a respected editor before George even started making Star Wars. The winners are Paul Hirsch, Marsha Lucas and Richard Chu for Star Wars. Marsha Lucas won an Academy Award for editing Star Wars and seeing as she was married to the guy that wrote Star Wars, we probably should respect her opinion. Now it's often said that Marsha saved Star Wars in the edit suite, but that's quite an unusual thing to say because every film either lives or dies in the edit suite. Every great film that you've ever seen could have been killed by a bad edit. So to say that George asked his wife, who was a respected editor, to edit the film he was making is somehow seen as him being saved instead of him knowing a good thing when he sees it is quite an odd way to put it. And last but most significantly, we had a director who, apart from his many other obvious talents, is himself a fine editor, George Lucas. Thank you, George. Thank you. And it wasn't just the edit. She also helped craft the story and make it more believable. Carrie Fisher has said, and when she wanted to change part of the dialogue, it's Marsha she would go to to convince George it was a good idea. Mark Hamill said of Marsha Lucas in 2005 interview that she was really the warmth in the heart of those films. A good person. A good person George could talk to. Bounce ideas off of. Who would tell him when he was wrong. I know for a fact that Marsha Lucas was responsible for convincing him to keep that little kiss for luck before Carrie and I swung across the chasm in the first film. And her influence was such that if she wanted it kept in, it was in. Marsha Lucas also had input on such important events as Obi-Wan Kenobi dying in A New Hope and the trench run. Marsha can be credited for bringing the human side to Star Wars, which you could say was lacking in the prequels. And before Star Wars, she was the editor of American Graffiti and Martin Scorsese's Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, as well as being supervising editor on Taxi Driver, one of the greatest films ever made. So when it comes to modern cinema, I'd say her opinion's pretty important. And her opinion on the sequels is not only spot on, it's hilarious and validates a lot of what we've been saying for years now. Because you see, anytime you criticise the Disney Star Wars sequels, the Disney Star Wars lovers and defenders come out with the same tired old bullshit that anyone that doesn't like those films is a misogynistic, racist asshole. Get the fuck out of here! No, I cannot, it's serious! So watching these defenders crumble and lose their minds and have a breakdown, when the one person who could probably be seen as only second to George Lucas to the original Star Wars comes out and completely destroys the sequels has been quite interesting to watch. <laughs> So what actually did Marsha say? Well, in a newly published book by former Lucasfilm executive editor J.W. Rinsler on Howard Kazagin, who produced The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, Marsha gives Kathleen Kennedy and J.J. Abrams the full force choke death grip. And boy, was she brutal. I like Kathleen. I always liked her. She was full of beans, like any coffee woman should be. She was really smart and really bright. Really wonderful woman. And I liked her husband, Frank. I liked them a lot. Now that she's running Lucasfilm and making movies, it seems to me that Kathleen Kathleen Kennedy and J.J. Abrams don't have a clue about Star Wars. I just need to repeat that bit. Don't have a clue about Star Wars.
They don't get it. And J.J. Abrams is writing these stories. <laughs> Sorry, Ryan Johnson. You haven't even registered on Marsha Lucas's radar. Is the idea of doing a new story on the big canvas of three movies in this world. But back to Marsha. When I saw that movie where they kill Han Solo, I was furious. I was furious when they killed Han Solo. Absolutely, positively, there was no rhyme or reason to it. I thought, you don't get the Jedi story at all. You don't get the magic of Star Wars. You're getting rid of Han Solo. That's not how the Force works. Did you hear that, freaks? You don't get the Jedi story. You don't get the magic of Star Wars. Wow, that's going to hurt a few egos. Hot tank. Luke is in fact 100% consistent with his character. Not the way he's described in marketing blurbs, but he's actual based on his words and actions character from the OT. I'll be in the bar if you need me. If you listen carefully, weirdos' heads all around the world are exploding. But let us go on. They have Luke disintegrate. They killed Han Solo. They killed Luke Skywalker. And they don't have Princess Leia anymore. And they're spitting out movies every year. And they think it's important to appeal to a woman's audience. So now their main character is this female who's supposed to have Jedi powers. But we don't know how she got those Jedi powers. Or who she is. It sucks. The storylines are terrible. Just terrible. Awful. <laughs> Oh, it's like an angel's come down from heaven is just whispering in my ear. And she goes on, you can quote me, J.J. Abrams, Kathleen Kennedy, talk to me. Well, I don't believe they will be because no one can tell them what to do. And I do worry about Ryan's little heart. He doesn't even get a mention. Marsha Lucas doesn't even know he exists. <laughs> I wish I didn't know he existed. I know one thing. I'll be ordering Howard Kazajian's A Producer's Life today. I'll be framing that page on my wall. Apologies if I'm pronouncing his name completely wrong, but you know, I'm from Australia. It's my excuse for everything. Now a little break to talk about our favourite sponsor, Squarespace. One of the luxuries I enjoy as the Jet Setter Robot Head is having a website that not only looks incredible, but also leads the way in features and design. And the best part is, thanks to Squarespace, everyone can now have a professionally designed website that will grow your passion and help make your life as fantastic as mine. Whether you're a business owner, YouTuber, podcaster, photographer, filmmaker, musician, or a shop owner, you need to have a home. You need a website. And with Squarespace, you can have a killer website with built-in features to help you grow your online presence. Squarespace will have you bringing your website to life with features like photo galleries, portfolios, and one of my favourites, video backgrounds, all of which you will be able to easily manage and edit yourself. Oh, look at that beautiful robot head. And with the new members area, you can monetize and protect your content right on your own website. And then no one can stop you making that lovely money. And because Squarespace can't stop getting better, they've just introduced Squarespace Video Studio, which is a game changer for marketing your business. Go to squarespace.com slash robot head and try Squarespace absolutely free for 14 days. And then when you're ready to blast off use the code robothead for 10 percent off your first purchase see the link below get your ass moving on those dreams go to squarespace today and i think the amazing thing about the force is the force is in all of us yeah it's not that it's just female it's not that it's just male it's it's the force and whether or not somebody can claim it as their own i think that that's ubiquitous yeah so how are all the man-baby-calling, Disney Star Wars-loving weirdos going to take this? And I include Ryan Johnson and half the Lucasfilm staff in that group. We all love Star Wars, but we're all coming in from very different places. This has been a very free environment for everybody to just throw things out there. <laughs> At first, I'll just try and diminish her opinion or her influence on the original movies. Haters gonna hate. More Star Wars content. Yes, please. What a dumb statement. All I'm hearing is that she's mad because they wanted to progress the story instead of watching three old characters that should logically die sooner or later anyway. It uh, sounds to me like someone is just butthurt that she wasn't involved in the new films because nobody asked her to come back for them. Whoa, boomers are angry. Harold L. Stokes, who considers himself a bit of an expert on film, had some great takes. We don't know how she got her Jedi powers. Is really the worst part of the Marshall Lucas quote. Did she want them to go back into midichlorians? Oh, okay, so she's just crapping on everything cool, not just the SD. Still convinced she doesn't get Star Wars. LOL. And fully vaxxed Brittany Joe also wanted to jump in with her insight into the creative process. I respect her talent as an editor, but like, what exactly did she think they should have done with the ST? Have no new characters and just have the middle-aged cast do the OT again? If you want to watch the OT again, I suggest you watch the OT again. Did you know that the original trilogy never explained how Luke, Vader, Anakin or Yoda got their Jedi powers? Do these clowns even watch the film? Oh great, this guy's a writer and he loves Star Wars. But he doesn't know that Anakin and Darth Vader are the same person. And they did explain it. How embarrassing. 
How embarrassing. Just her opinion. The chant of the Participation Award generation, where social media has made everyone's opinion super fucking important and equal to everyone else's. There are opinions that are not only educated, but professionally respected within an industry. So yes, it is her opinion, and it's an important one. Once you've just decided, I hate the new Star Wars... Leave. But I'm guessing it's going to be more like what happened when Mark Hamill came out criticising the film or when George Lucas came out and criticised the films. Mark made it pretty clear that he didn't like the new direction of Star Wars, which resulted in hundreds of clowns coming at him. Even when he shared an image that just showed that it would have been nice to have a scene with his old friends, hundreds of weirdos lined up to abuse him for his opinion. These small brain people don't understand you can have a character that is older but is also treated with respect and has an interesting story. A lion doesn't concern himself with the opinions of a sheep. And there's this misconception that Harrison Ford had the final say on whether Han Solo got killed off or not. Now, we all know that Harrison wanted to get out after episode four, but that's not how Hollywood works. Do you really think Bob Iger gives a fuck about what Harrison Ford thinks? We had a big debate about Han Solo. You know, should he die or not? Should we kill him off? And it was ultimately a decision that was made by Kathy Kennedy and and J.J. Abrams. I got involved. too. Kylo Ren and Raylo is the reason I became a Star Wars fan. <laughs> no, sadly, for some reason, a lot of strange people want to claim a franchise they were never interested in as their own and be angry with anyone that liked the original content or even worked or created the original content like spoilt children finding a new toy and not wanting to share. So moving away from the weirdos and Raylos who will just dismiss Marsha's comments as her being old or bitter or just can't let go. No, the real point here is how openly she just puts down Kathleen, JJ and Ryan. Now I'm sure they're combined gigantic egos that don't seem to be able to take any criticism will publicly just dismiss these comments. But deep down, surely somewhere in their black little hearts, there is a twinge that George Lucas's wife, who edited Star Wars, who won an Academy Award for Star Wars, just completely called you out for fucking up the greatest franchise that's ever been made. Looking back, would you change anything in your script or do you stand by all your choices? Yep, stand by every choice. And this is just how Marsha Lucas feels about the finished product. I'd love to get her thoughts on a few other matters, like Bob Iger, Kathleen Kennedy and J.J. Abrams getting together to decide that George Lucas's plans for the sequels would be just thrown in the bin and ignored. A businessman, an assistant and a guy that's only ever copied other films his whole career made the decision to ignore one of the greatest storytellers of all time. From that moment on, we're all doomed to these fucking shit films. Marsha also had a few things to say about the prequels. I know this because two seconds after posting the original quote about the sequels, the Twitter lunatic's head started exploding and the abuse started flowing. Everything from just, I was a general asshole" to I was lying and having some huge cover-up and somehow this had something to do with what she thought of the prequels. A quote about the prequels that I didn't even know existed at the time. The sequel defenders think if they bring up something bad from the prequels, it makes their films better. I never understand that. Anyway, Marsha said, about the Phantom Menace. I cried because I didn't think it was very good. I thought he had such a rich vein to mine, a rich palette to tell stories with. He had all those characters. And I thought it was weird that the story was about this little boy who looked like he was six years old. But then later on, he's supposed to get with this princess. He looked like she was 20 years old. Sadly, for the weirdo that was doing his best to uncover some scheme for me to lie and cover up the truth, I agree with Master on the prequels as well. And a lot of people did. I didn't think this was news to anyone. And I think most people agree the reason that Phantom Menace isn't great is because Master Marsha wasn't around to keep George in line. She didn't like the prequels either. So why don't you post the rest of what she said? Then post the prequel quotes and I'll call it a day. Because you like to mislead your audience because you know they like this shit up. You want to mislead people to get the clicks and the dollar signs. I can't help that you're a lying bag of BS. They doesn't give a rat's ass about any of you unless you're just as sad and hateful as them because he's intentionally withholding this piece of information. Be sure to include her thoughts on the prequels. This fine gentleman's one of these people that likes to have things like spread love, not hate, on his banner, but then spends every day screaming and fighting with people on Twitter or stalking people people. I really don't know what this weirdo was on about, but hey, fuck you, dickhead. So what will Marsha Lucas's bomb on Lucasfilm actually do for the future of Star Wars? Absolutely nothing. If the new Star Wars fans aren't going to give a shit about what Mark Hamill thinks, and if Kathleen Kennedy's going to just completely ignore George Lucas, she ain't going to give a rat's ass what Marsha Lucas has to say. No, the lunatics have taken over the asylum. Kathleen Kennedy's not going anywhere. She's too smart for that. She might not have a creative bone in her body, but she didn't get where she is in life by giving up her position and all that lovely, lovely cash. No, the only hope we 
you have is if these films start losing money. And that's not going to happen because there's too many idiots in the world. So thank you, Marsha Lucas, for all your work. You gave us American Graffiti. You gave us Taxi Driver. And you gave us the original Star Wars trilogy. The people that love your work are on your side. Those new films are fucking terrible. Ah, if only George had been a better husband. You might have stayed together and those prequels would have been amazing. Maybe even the sequels would have been amazing. Ray Skywalker.